Welcome to Simon Dev. In this JavaScript tutorial, we're going to be exploring implementing a Boyd simulation or a flocking simulation, depending on how you've heard it described. They're the same thing. To begin, Boyd's is an artificial life technique originally published by Craig Reynolds in 1987. I've included the link to both the Wikipedia page and Craig Reynolds site below in the description. So if you want to follow up, they're great resources. Now, I've used this flocking simulation a number of times over the years in various games. It's incredibly versatile, as you're seeing right now. Now, all the code is available online on GitHub, so take a look if you're interested. The link is in the description below as well. What we're going to go over today is what Boyd's are, and thus what a Boyd's simulation is, and how simple and basic steering behaviors can be combined in various ways to give rise to seemingly complex systems. I'll step through how these behaviors were used in our flocking simulation to create both the underwater and the outer space scenes, and what tweaks and changes I made to the basic behaviors to try to make the fish look more fishy or the spaceships look more spaceshipy. Steering behaviors. So, what are steering behaviors? They're the simple behaviors we're going to be looking at that, when added up together, can result in an overall complex looking system like we'll see in our Boyd simulation. To begin, our Boyds will just be wandering around, not doing anything other than that, just kind of minding their own business, wandering around, not taking anything into consideration. This is really easy. This is just accomplished by having them randomly move ahead and tweak the angle occasionally so they turn and move about a bit. You can see that there's no attempt to avoid each other at all or doing anything else of interest. They're colliding with each other constantly. we'll go and add one of the first behaviors, separation. And separation is conceptually simple. You look around you and you steer away from any objects in your vicinity. In this case, we have a sphere representing how far this Boyd can see. And this little guy can see around him. He sees a bunch of other Boyds and now he makes an attempt to avoid them. And this is accomplished with relatively little code. All you do is you get all of the nearby Boyds, you calculate the direction to them, and then you try to go to the opposite way. It's working pretty well. There's no hard constraint that they can't overlap, and we don't bother with the kinematic non-penetration constraint that Craig Reynolds mentions in his paper, but if you look closely, you can catch them overlapping occasionally. It's not really a big deal. The next behavior is alignment, and Craig Reynolds defines this as steering towards the average heading of local flock mates. Again, this is easy enough. Everybody nearby can just average out their direction and try to move in the same direction. So what we do is, again, we grab everybody that's nearby, we query for them, we get the direction that they're heading in, and then we average them all out. You can see now that we're doing that, it's not quite as chaotic as it was before. You've got these little groups that seem to be moving in unison with each other. They've naturally sort of fallen in line. The last basic steering behavior we're going to look at is cohesion. And cohesion is really just steering to move towards the center of mass of local flock mates, sort of like a force of gravity for all the Boyds. In other words, getting closer to everyone. And all this is accomplishing is giving the group a bit of stickiness. They'll move in the same direction, but they'll also attempt to stay close to their buddies. Now with this on, the groups sort of stick together much better. And if you see two groups collide, they'll probably merge into a single uber group. Now the last trick is just combining these in some sane way in the flocking simulation. And it's not as complex as you might think. It's really just about weighting them appropriately. And this is honestly where magic constants and fiddling around until it looks right comes in. You can see from this code that I've just sort of assigned weights. These were roughly just guesses as to how important I thought the behaviors were. Keep in mind that some of these forces also drop off based on distance, so the weighting just adds a level of prioritization on top. But that's it. With these three basic behaviors into Boyd's implementation, you can get some incredibly complex and interesting systems. There's a bunch more steering behaviors we can also add on top, the original Craig Reynolds paper just specified the three, but uh, they've since added quite a few. Check out his website if you're interested, but we've got enough to do some really cool things already. I'll take the flocking simulation with these three steering behaviors and show you two different scenarios.
The first thing we'll do is we'll make an underwater scene. Now, originally Craig Reynolds developed his flocking simulation for birds, hence the Boyd's name. But with underwater, this has a lot of interesting possibilities since it's very much like birds in the sky, except that you've got enormous diversity in terms of what fish are down there, that kind of thing. I whipped up a quick fish here in Blender, as you can see. Blender is a free 3D software package, and uh, my art skills are pretty weak, so uh, yeah. We'll start our underwater Boyd simulation scene with a few fish. What I was hoping to do is mimic that variety of sea life that you'd see down by the ocean floor. So to start, I've taken that first fish model and scaled it to three different sizes, small, medium, and large. And you can see them all moving around now, but the whole thing isn't really that convincing. Small fish are really fast and turn on a dime, while bigger fish don't really dart around. Uh, the bigger they are, the kind of slower they move. What I want to do is capture that feeling in our flocking simulation. And the way we'll accomplish this is by jacking up the speed on the lower fish and allowing them to accelerate quickly, turn quickly, and not allowing the bigger guys to do that. That just means we'll throttle the steering factor more aggressively on the bigger fish so that they take longer to turn and avoid things. Next, uh, it doesn't really look right when a bunch of big fish and little fish all try to hang out together. I imagine that uh, some of those big fish are probably trying to eat some of those little fish, so... I think that those little guys want to form huge, fast schools, and the bigger ones can't keep up anyway. And the way we'll accomplish this is by tweaking the alignment and cohesion behaviors. Specifically, what we do is every fish only considers similar sized fish when deciding to swim near them and in the same direction. That's sort of looking better now. Our Boyd simulation is looking pretty good. Everyone has their own little click now. The next thing we want to do is remove the 2D constraint. When it was just cones, it was easier to work with everything in two dimensions just to test, but fish also swim up and down, and again, we're going to tweak this. Fish can swim up and down, but tend to swim parallel to the ground. So what I'm going to do is weight the steering factor more heavily for the XZ dimensions, and only let the up, down, or Y dimension uh, through uh, just a little bit. Now they're moving in all dimensions, and... To me, at least, uh, more realistically, they're not going up and down as often as they're going side to side, which is at least based on my viewing of fish in pet stores, how they act. I did about zero research, so feel free to correct me here in the comments. We're mostly here. What I'm going to do is add some big whale things just to make the overall scene a little bit cooler, and voila, we've got an underwater scene with a bunch of fish swimming around, and looks pretty nice considering the amount of work it took. I also made a space scene, and this was a little Battlestar Galactica inspired. I was thinking back on all those battles with the Cylons, and I was thinking that this could be totally done with a flocking simulation, and figured I could recreate it with our board simulation. There's only a few elements here. You've got these little fighter ships, and then the Battlestar-like cruiser things. The first thing we'll do is dump two of these Battlestars into the scene, and space them an appropriate distance apart. They're not part of the simulation because they don't move, but they do have bounding boxes that the fighters will have to avoid. Secondly, we'll put a few hundred of these fighters into our flocking simulation. Mostly the same steering behaviors that the fish have, but again, tweaked a bit for the scene. The first thing we needed to do was remove some of the rotational constraints that the fish had. Fish were constrained to stay upright because I figured that was realistic. I'm not sure fish float upside down normally unless there's a problem, so the fish models had to be constrained to stay as upright as possible. These fighters have no constraints. There's no up in space, and so we'll let them spin around however they want. Secondly, we want two groups of them, one set of fighters for each side. So we'll assign teams to each Boyd. One will be red team, and the other one will be blue team, and they'll sort of attack the opposite side by having a steering behavior which makes them seek towards the opposite battleship. Technically, we could stop here, but I'll ladle on a bunch of effects. I'll give them all lasers, which are, in essence, super long, thin billboards. And I actually had to implement this for bullet trails for a major Xbox PlayStation game a few years ago. So this is the 20-minute version. I'm not going to go into detail, but uh, the code is really short, and you can just take it or ask me. I've also added a quick explosion. We just kind of want to pop out some additive particles and rapidly decelerate, fading to red and then black. 
It's pretty nonsense how this is done. If a ship sees a ship vaguely in the same area, it'll fire its lasers. And then there's about a 1 in 400 chance that I'll just set off an explosion on the nearby ship. Oh, and I added a bunch of random post effects that 3JS had lying around. Uh, they look pretty cool, so enjoy. Now, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, give it a like and hit that subscribe button in the corner. Also, if you have any suggestions for what you'd like to see in the future, leave a comment below. Until next time, cheers everyone.